Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today at Nordon Preferred Kitchen Equipment Studios. And joining us in the kitchen is Chef Yehuda Sichel. He's from Abe Fisher Restaurant in Philadelphia. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. So what's on the menu? Um, today we're doing a chopped liver mousse with um, some schmalty rye bread and nice. some pickled onions. And then we're also doing a tuna, sort of two ways, kind of like a play on a niçoise. Um, so we're doing a raw tuna over like a tuna potato salad with some haricot vert and some calamato olives. And then we throw in some everything bagel spice just to... Very nice. Well, why don't we get started? It looks like we've got all kinds of ingredients here to work with. Yeah. So I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the potatoes going for the potato salad. Okay. So if you don't mind. So we're just going to start them in some cold water. Always start potatoes in cold water. Always start the potatoes in co cold salted water. Mm -hmm. If you were to start them in boiling water, it would really start to cook the outside before the inside. This way it gently cooks the whole potato. Perfect. Uh, the second thing we're going to want to start is to really caramelize the onions for the chopped liver and to make the onion jam, because both of those take a really, really long time. So um, I guess I'll start uh, by cutting the onions. OK. And this is just a regular yellow onion? This, uh, well, we actually have two types of onion. Um, mm -hmm. I like to mix them up. So we have we have a nice uh, sweet Vidalia onion, and then we have some large Spanish onions. Cool. Um, and these probably caramelize a little better because they have more sugar. Exactly. So the higher the sugar, the better they're caramelized. Exactly. Great. Now tell me a little bit about Abe Fisher. So Abe Fisher is the cuisine of the Jewish diaspora, mm -hmm. um, which really is you know the traveling Jew. Uh, we focus a lot on the food that was brought over to Montreal and New York, you know, sort of after World War II. Um, you know, my grandparents were Hungarian, mm -hmm. so I do have a little bit of that influence as well. Nice. And it's um, all small plates? It's all small plates. We do have some large format dishes, like uh, we have a big Montreal short rib that um, is served with like rye bread and mustard and all that good stuff. And then we have like a large steak for two and we have a duck for two, you know, we, but otherwise it is small plates. I like to caramelize my onions in schmaltz. Mm. So schmaltz is uh, rendered chicken fat, definitely a staple in old world Jewish cooking. Definitely, and, and I uh, find to be an underutilized ingredient in general. Absolutely, so, you know, it's really, really good. It's packed with flavor. Mm -hmm. It's got a pretty high smoking point. You could even like fry in it. Oh, cool. As you can see, I definitely like kind of piled this in. You don't really want a lot of surface area. You want the onions to cook out the water so that okay. the sugar is being drawn out. And then what's happening is the sugars are slowly caramelizing. If you caramelize onions or anything with sugar um, too fast, it could burn. And it's not going to be quite okay, as sweet. Sense. And you're really going to lose that like depth of flavor. So you want to go really, really nice and slow. As far as the onion jam, we're going to have a very similar uh, way of cooking it, where we're going to take schmaltz. More schmaltz. Now, if I can't make my own schmaltz, where can you buy this? Um, you kind of have to like find a butcher okay. who has it. Um, we get ours from a local butcher meat purveyor in the city called uh, George Wells. So this is actually some ground pastrami. Hmm. You could use any sort of ground smoked meat, even like ground bacon would be really good. Okay. Um, not kosher. Not kosher, but really <laughs> delicious. Um, <laughs> We do you are, make your pastrami in-house? We do. So this is actually our Montreal short rib. So it's a Montreal-style pastrami. We take sort of the, the ends of that, and we grind it up. And, and it's the base of a lot of our stuff, actually. Cool. Lots of flavor in there. Lots of flavor. So that also, we're going to go really nice and slow. Stay tuned for more from the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. Nordam, it's fantastic. There's a lot of space. It's high-tech equipment. The ovens are phenomenal. I can't wait to own one. This uh, chopped liver recipe, um, everything's sort of done in uh, like stages. Okay. Um, so you have like your caramelized onions in one stage, you have some ch chicken stock in one stage, you have some hard boiled eggs in another stage, and then you sort of combine them all together and you make, you, could, you have two options. You can either just make traditional chopped liver, mm -hmm. or if you want to take it one extra step, you can make it into the chopped liver mousse, which actually is so easy. It's amazing. We like easy. We love easy. Um, <laughs> so while this is happening, let me So you sure. have some kind of seasoning here. Is that yes. caraway seed? Exactly. So okay. 
Very good. So this is actually salted overnight or cured overnight. Um, we actually weigh it out. Um, we do 2% of the weight in salt and 3% of the weight in caraway seed. Wow. Um, and this draws out a little bit of the moisture so you get a nice sear on it. Mm -hmm. And it also imparts that like rye bread flavor into it. Cause nice. like caraway is like pretty synonymous with rye bread. So we're gonna add a little bit of oil to the pan. And I'm actually gonna add a little bit of schmaltz too. Why not? A little extra schmaltz never yeah, hurt anybody. Not? Might splatter a little bit, whatever. Remember, schmaltz does, and any sort of animal fat, will have a little bit of water in it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna wanna get the livers in. Watch out, it might splatter a little bit. And are we cooking these all the way through, or are we just trying to sear the outsides? Um, it's okay if they're cooked through. Mm -hmm. um, traditionally, you know, chopped liver was definitely one of those old Jewish foods. And they're pretty much already seasoned because you kind of salted them overnight. Exactly. So they're already salted. They're going to be ready to go. Um, in the meantime, we could see this short rib is nice and rendered. Mm -hmm. You know, it smells oh, yeah. really, really good. Um, we're going to add our onion to it. And we'll let that cook for a hot second. All right. Let's check our liver. So you kind of know they're ready to flip when they easily come up. Yeah, and also you could see the edges sort mm -hmm. of are starting to turn like gray. Right. Um, which means that it's cooking. Well, what do you yeah. think about this kitchen? Isn't this not amazing? This kitchen's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm like pretty jealous. I really <laughs> want one of these in my house. This this thing would be really cool. Yeah, this is a wonderful oven. Everything in here is really cool. The grill, mm -hmm. the stove is magnificent. So you get a little bit of browning on there. Very, very nice. Oh, and, uh, yeah, they look great. And you can actually just eat these as they are. If you could grab me a plate, we're gonna drain the liver. Mm. Yeah, they smell really, really smell good. Smell really good. You can really smell the caraway too. Oh yeah. All right, and we're actually gonna wanna get these cool. The onions and the pastrami are cooking down. Mm -hmm. uh, we are gonna take a little bit of vinegar to deglaze. I love the flavor of sherry vinegar too. It's so good. Sherry vinegar and honey and like pastrami and onions is like, Pretty ridiculous. Can't say I've ever had it with pastrami. <laughs> well, there you go. A um, little bit of honey. The vinegar is going to cook out. The honey is going to start to caramelize, mm -hmm. along with the onions. Um, and like I said, this is going to go on really, really low heat for like, you know, anywhere from like three to six hours. However nice you want to make it. So we just let that hang out. Does it need to be stirred or? Exactly. Just kind of let it hang out. Cool. Um, all right. So while the onions and the jam is working we are gonna move on to the tuna. So you wanna make sure, obviously, if you're gonna be serving raw tuna, that it, it looks really good. It should obviously smell nice. For sure, um, yeah, it doesn't smell fishy at all. Exactly, it should be really, really nice and appealing. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna actually take the chain off. Okay. Um, the chain is like pretty sinewy, so you don't really wanna like slice it and eat it raw, but it's really, really great for confing. In most restaurants, if you are gonna put tuna on your menu, you are most likely going to utilize the chain. What we're going to do first is we're just going to come along here nice. and sort of drag my knife. I'm taking the skin off too. Exactly. Where do you get your fish from? Um, I get my fish from Samuels and Sons. Excellent. Um, they pretty much supply the entire <laughs> city. Yeah. When dealing with tuna, you want um, a nice container of cold water to keep your knife clean. Okay. Um, and actually a little bit wet, so it slices right through the tuna. So that um, helps it give like a cleaner slice? Exactly. I mean, yeah. you'll see like sushi chefs, they always dip their knife in water and they yeah. let it drip down. That's a great um, tip. Yeah, so that's what you want to do. Um, so it keeps it really, really nice. Um, so for the chain, I'm actually going to take it off the skin. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just going to sort of chop it up. Yeah, you can really see all it. that connective tissue in there. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm just going to actually chop this up into like little strips. Put my knife back, and then I'm gonna grab a saute pan. Now, are the dishes that you're making today on the menu at Abe Fisher? Yeah, so this is, we actually call this the tuna crudo dish. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's some cooked tuna on there. We're gonna salt it, and then we're gonna put some olive oil on top. And you're starting with a cold pan. 
Exactly. We just want to we want to go into like a really really low oven. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have a steamer at the restaurant, which works really nice. Um, you can cover it. Um, but we're just like trying to cook this through so we can flake it. So really, you could just go in the oven um, for about five minutes. Oh, that's it. Stay tuned for more from Nordon Preferred Kitchen Equipment. This is my first time at Nordon, and it's been an absolutely incredible experience. The equipment is top notch from the induction burners to this. I mean, the stove gave up off incredible heat. It wasn't hot to me. This deck oven is beautiful. I mean, a plancha. The variety of, of products that they have is incredible. All right, so now we're sort of left with this beautiful piece of tuna. Um, we're going to start by taking out this bloodline, which mm -hmm. we really don't want. Anything you could utilize that for, or that's pretty much? That's pretty much trash. So now we're going to try to, we're going to want to break this down into nice pieces. And is this going to be the actual crudo? This is going to be for the crudo. OK. So you want to give yourself some nice bars. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I'm not like sawing through it. Yeah, really nice. You just nice like want like food. nice, it's so like a really, you know, long, sharp. Yeah, this knife. makes sense now, this whole dipping in cold water <laughs> trick. Because exactly. It, it makes it a little more slick and not mm -hmm. sticky. I like exactly. That. And actually like these divots in the knife also kind of help. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to go, I'm going to cut that in half. But how and many then, people would this feed? This whole piece of tuna yeah. can feed a lot <laughs> a of people. Lot. For today, we're just going to make one platter, so this will probably be enough. It's definitely an art to this. You know, I've spent a lot of time sitting at sushi bars, <laughs> sort of just watching them. Next, I'm going to have you All slice right. some bread for Put me. Put me to work. Um, for the rye bread. So this is our Jewish-style rye bread that we have at the restaurant. Um, so it's, interesting. Yeah, so we actually have these molds that, like, bake it into a round, um, which is Really cool. Yeah. I think. Is that traditional? It is not. It's not <laughs> at all. Um, but it's it's really really cool. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to cut. You're gonna cut the end off. Okay. And then you're gonna cut. Um, I call them by two by two. So you're gonna cut. It's like double thick. Exactly. So you're gonna cut like almost like Texas toast. Okay. And then we're gonna brush it, brush it with some schmaltz, and then we are going to griddle it. Yum. So I'm gonna grab a saute pan. For that. Um, while she's doing this, I'm going to process the chopped liver. So I'm going to grab my caramelized onions. I got my liver right here. Do you want me to cut this whole thing? Um, if you want to eat it all. <laughs> Don't challenge me. <laughs> uh, but four slices is enough. Okay. So we're going to take uh, two or three hard boiled eggs. We're going to take our chicken stock and some schmaltz. Mm. We're also going to grab a little bit of our sherry vinegar. All right, and and this is all going to get blended together? So there's actually two steps to this. So first, we're going to put it into the food processor mm -hmm. um, and then cool that down just to homogenize it and break it down. All right. And like I said, you can eat it like that. Like That's like pretty classic chopped liver. Yeah. And then we're going to move it over to the blender and whip it into actually, it's going to turn into a liquid. Mm. Um, and then overnight, or in a couple hours, it will set and turn into a nice mousse from all the protein. So it has to be cold? It definitely has to be cold. Okay. And even once it's cold, it then has to like set up. <laughs> so I got my caramelized onions in here. They're super caramelized, too. They yeah. take about six hours also? Um, we actually like to, they could take up to 12 hours. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, you know, we have a lot of time during the day to sort of <laughs> slow cook things. And now, do they need to be babysat? Or you can kind of just no. let them go? They, I mean, you definitely don't want to burn them. Um, fortunately, we have a kettle. Mm. Now that I've got everything in there. Turn that on. How's that food processor working? It's really awesome. Great. Um, so now you basically have some, like, what appears to be chopped liver. Um, once we add it into the blender, we're going to add our, our liquids, our chicken stock, and our vinegar. And since it's all going to be like nice and emulsified, um, the chicken stock will actually help it become lighter. Um, oh, really? As opposed to like a dense yeah. liver mousse. That's a great tip. Yeah. So. We're going to 
literally go right into the blender. Stay tuned for more from the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. Cooking in Nordon is one of the, my most favorite things that I get to do when I get invited to the show, just because the equipment is so fantastic and they pretty much have everything you could possibly dream of as a chef. We could start making the potato salad. All right. So if you want to grab a mixing bowl. We got the potatoes, we got the green beans. We're gonna grab some dill and chop that. How's your bread over there? It's coming along. Okay. Not quite toasted yet. Cool. We'll take a little bit of lemon juice. Just gonna squeeze that in. I like to squeeze lemons upside down so the seeds don't get in. Pro tip. Good technique. Um, some of your tuna that's been confit. So this is the confit tuna. Exactly. Oh, so you can actually. Piece. Yeah, sure. Just taste it. Mm. So you could mm. you could actually just shred it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We're gonna grab a spoon. That's great. Um, and then we're gonna grab a little bit of uh, a remoulade, which is at at the restaurant. We we make an old bay remoulade, so it's uh, mayonnaise, like it's like chopped up red onions and pickles and okay. uh, old bay. As I am from Baltimore. Oh, so very we're nice. Add some Love of this. that reference. Got to represent. Um, and that is it. And you could add whatever else. You could like chop pickles in there if you want. You could put capers. You could, you know, do a whole bunch of things. So All you're right. gonna mix this up. While you're doing that, I'm gonna finish the liver. So even after you already blended it, you're gonna strain it again. Exactly, because really what we want is just like the pureed goodness. I'm just gonna push it through the chinois. Oh, that looks awesome. So you got some nice brown edges. I, I actually just turned the heat off oh, and we'll just okay. let it let it ride on there. Great. But that's some beautiful griddled bread. Moving on to the liver. We're gonna now build the liver plate. So we're gonna take some of our onion jam, put that on the bottom that of the plate. Awesome. These are some onion petals that we've soaked in ice water uh, for 30 minutes. And then we soak them overnight in vinegar and water and salt. Why um, do you soak them in water first that kind of cut that real harsh oniony taste. Exactly, it cuts okay. out the oniony taste. And what you're left with is like not like a super pickled onion, but um, just like a palate cleanser. Cool. You can also use it as a vessel to scoop the liver. So then we're gonna take the liver that's like really nice and set up. Mm -hmm. It's it's really, really moussey. Oh, look how creamy that is. I know, you wow. just put a nice piece over there. Grab some chives. You can actually take um, two pieces of bread and put it right on the plate over there. And then we'll just finish it with a little bit of salt. Very simple, very classic. Very simple, very classic. Um, but modern still. Yeah, like when you close your eyes, you're tasting rye bread and chopped liver, right. but um, the texture is a little different. Gorgeous. So okay. now we'll plate up the tuna? Now I'll plate up the tuna. Just one, one other thing that I just wanted to mention. Um, we got some uh, green beans mm -hmm. that have been pickled overnight in pickle juice. So okay. we actually just take like, and we make our dill pickles, but you can actually buy just like jar, dill pickles and use the juice and pour them over blanched green beans overnight. Okay. And uh, what you're left with is basically a dill pickle tasting green bean. Green bean. Um, and to really, you know, give it like that salad niçoise kind of deal. So we'll just kind of chop those up. Um, Very so mild. what we have here is that potato salad that you made so nicely. And we're kind of just going to want to run it down the plate a little bit. And obviously this potato salad could be served on its own. Oh, for sure. Like at a backyard barbecue. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like it's potato salad with like all the best things Definitely. in there. All right, that'll go over there. Um, we're going to take our tuna and just sort of layer Clown, it on there. Insane. It's awesome, right? I love the combination of the cooked with the raw too. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, you know. It also definitely impress your friends. <laughs> um, and you're using all the parts of the tuna, which exactly. is Exactly, it's very important. It's very, very important. Uh, a little bit of kosher salt. And this is um, a Kalamato olive puree. Huh. Um, or you can have it in the form of a vinaigrette. So this would be broken. This is a little bit more emulsified. We add a little bit of xanthan gum okay. to sort of keep it together, um, but very, very little. So you can do a little squiggle of that. Um, and then these are some everything bagel breadcrumbs. So awesome. you can actually take an everything bagel and 
buzz it up and cook it in a little bit of butter. In our case, we use some challah, and okay. we make our own everything spice, but um, everything bagel is the way to go. So Great. you actually like want to go like pretty heavy on that, because that's what's going to really bring it some texture yeah. and make it all come nice together. Crunch. And then you're just going to garnish it with some of these This is beautiful. Beans. Let's get into awesome. this. Great. Just make myself a little sure. crostini. I'm going to go gonna do a little bit of the olive, a little bit of the raw tuna. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That is so good. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't think they like liver, I have to try that. Mmm. That's great too. So much flavor happening in both of these. These are mm -hmm. awesome. Yuda, thank you so much for being thank with us today so on much. Chef's Kitchen. We had a great time having you here, and we hope you come back again soon. I will. All right. Nordon is special because we have everything in-house under one roof. So when somebody sees a brochure, they come to Nordon, and Nordon brings it to life. The equipment is so fantastic, and they pretty much have everything you could possibly dream of as a chef. The typical Nordon customer comes to us for equipment expertise. The equipment is top-notch. The variety of products that they have is incredible. When you come here and I see four things that I want or need. If you need something in the Philadelphia, Delaware Valley area, Nordon is your number one choice. You won't be disappointed. I really like cooking in the Nordon studio because it's very spacious. You get some really high heat on those stoves and everything is really like new and shiny and it's really fun to work in.